So this is Phys 2320 Computing 2, and this is the fourth unit in the series of video tutorials which look at SciPy. And this unit in particular is going to be discussing all about curve fitting, which is one of the most useful and important things we end up doing with the SciPy module um, when we're looking um, at how to use Python in physics. So this first part, I'm going to first of all talk a little bit about what curve fitting is actually all about. So what are we trying to do um, and what's sort of the basis of what the Python code is trying to, to work on? So let's suppose that uh, a student's got a set of um, experimental measurements and they know that this experimental data should probably be fitted by a straight line. So, for example, this might be an object that's moving with a constant velocity. Um, and so you have a graph of a position versus time, and the gradient of that line is telling you um, about the velocity, um, and the intercept tells you about where it started from at zero time, which may or may not be a useful thing. So the raw data might look a bit like this. Um, and if you look at that data point, you go, OK, yes, those all sort of fit um, more or less onto a line, but because there's some measurement error, um, those data points aren't all precisely on the line. There's a bit of scatter there. So if uh, the student then tries to go and draw the best straight line uh, through that data, then what they're going to try and do is draw something which fits to the uh, equation of a straight line, so y equals mx plus c, and they're going to try and draw it in such a way that that line passes as close as possible to all the data points in the uh, data set. But of course, because those data points are perfectly on a straight line, you can't just draw one line that goes through all the data points. You can only get it as close as you possibly can. Uh, and it's going to look something like this. So what's happened is the students made some kind of judgment to try and judge, well, if I push the line up or down a little bit, can I get it to minimize the distance between the line and all the data points? Um, and if you're that student and you're drawing that line by hand with a ruler, that's kind of what you're doing in your head automatically without really thinking terribly carefully about it. You're you're making a judgment call as to how can you position your ruler so that the line goes as close as possible to the data points, given that you can't go through all of them. But we can actually be a little bit more rigorous about this in terms of what's going on mathematically. And what we can go and do is we can go and calculate something which tells us about the distance of the line from the data points. And we can do that by comparing the value, the y coordinate of the data point. So in our um, formulation here, that's we're saying the data points are all at x and y coordinates. Um, and we're given a little subscript i to indicate which data point we're talking about. And so y little i is the y coordinate of the ith data point that we're talking about. And so we can look at the distance from that, from the position of the line, and we can get the position of the line by just substituting the x coordinate of our data point into the equation of the line. And so we just calculate yi minus mxi plus c. Or actually, that should be, there should be some extra brackets around there, shouldn't there? It should be yi minus mx plus c is all in brackets. Um, and then, of course, I actually want to make sure that we're interested in the distance. So we can square that to make sure it always turns out to be a positive number. Um, and so we can then do that for all the data points in our data set um, and sum those, those distances or those squares of those distances up. And that gives us some goodness of fit function. So that big F, um, which is a function of M and C, the, the gradient of the line and the intercept of the line, is telling us about something about how far is our line from all the data points, how how good a fit is it. So then what we need to go and try and do, and, and what you're kind of doing in your head, is you're trying to minimize that big F um, by adjusting the M and the C. So in other words, by adjusting the gradient and the intercept of your straight line, you're trying to minimize that big F. And then when we found the minimum value of big F, then we know that must be the best fit values of the gradient M and the intercept C. So this process is what's called least squares fitting, um, because what you're trying to do is look at the minimum of the square of the distance between the data point and the thing you're trying to fit in the y-axis. Um, and this is 
basically what's happening when you use um, any kind of graph packing, plotting package to go and fit a straight line, it is really doing is a least squares calculation. Um, so we can actually generalize this. So that was just for a straight line. And so we just had M and C, but suppose instead of having a straight line, we had a more complicated function. So we might now represent our function in terms of Y is F and then of X, because we need to have the X coordinates in our function, presumably, and then a whole bunch of different parameters. So I've called these P0, P1, P2, and so on, up to some number Pn. So for a straight line, we had P0 was the, the gradient M and P1 was the intercept C, and that was all we had. But in principle, you could have any, any kind of function you want, and it might have any number of these parameters. And then we can just again do the same thing. We can write up a cost function, a, a, a goodness of fit function, that big F, which is now going to be a function not of M and C, but of P0, P1, P2, P3, and so on, all the way up to Pn. And again, that's simply going to be the sum over all of our data points of the distance between the y coordinate and the value of your fitting function, the, the little f, for a given value of x and a whole bunch of different parameters, p, and then we, we square that. Um, so then all we have to go and do in order to fit any arbitrary function at all we want to is figure out what the smallest possible value of big f is by fiddling around with the values of the parameters p0, p1, p2, and so on. Um, of course, that would be really laborious and time consuming to do by hand, but that's okay because we have computers to go and do things and computers are very good at doing slow, laborious, time consuming things very, very fast. Um, and so as we'll see here, SciPy actually has some functions built in to go and find um, this best fit. Because what we've got here is basically just a minimization problem. So all we're trying to do is minimize that big F function in terms of its parameters, P0, P1, P2, and so on. And so as we saw, SciPy can, can minimize functions very nicely. And so that's all we're trying to do when we do curve fitting. But because it's such a kind of common task to go and say, I have a set of data, X, Y data points, and I have some kind of function that I believe will go and fit through those data points, um, then in the SciPy optimized module, it has a, a handy function which does all the work of expressing the, the goodness of fit function, the big F that we had, and then of minimizing it, and then of doing all, of all that sort of work. And this is called curve fit. And this is what we're gonna demonstrate the use of uh, in this unit.